Hello beautiful people. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to design a responsive navigation mobile first and we're also going to add in a landing page there with uh, hover action on the call to action button. So starting off, uh, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel and we'll get started here. So first off, I'm going to create a folder and it's going to be responsive ham nav and I'm going to create an index.html and CSS file. Then I'm going to uh, type exclamation point and press enter and we're going to have the base uh, boilerplate HTML. So we're going to give it a title and that's going to be responsive nav. Okay, we're gonna shrink that down and now we're going to link up the style.css file. We're gonna add a couple more links here. It's This one's gonna be for the Google fonts. I'm using the one of my favorites, the Montserrat font. Now we're gonna create a div with the class of wrapper within the body section and now we're within the wrapper we're going to create a section with a class of banner and then within the section there is going to be the landing page image and i haven't transferred over the image yet i'll do that here in a little bit so we're just going to lead it from the image folder we're gonna give the image a class of fit BG and then create a div with a class content. And within there, we are going to create an H2 and this is gonna be the uh, main text. And then below that, we're gonna have the paragraph. I'm gonna shrink this down and not worry too much about alignment here. Okay, so we're gonna have a, we're gonna create the button and it's gonna have a class of BTN and the href is just gonna lead to nowhere currently. Now we're gonna put the input and that's gonna be a type of checkbox with an ID of check. And then we're gonna give it a label. It's gonna be for check with a class of close. And then we're gonna have uh, I tag with the class of FAS, FA times. And we're gonna integrate font awesome and I'll show you guys how to add that script tag here in a little bit. So below that, we're gonna create a unordered list and then within there, we're gonna have an LI inside with an A inside of it and we're gonna create the tabs that we want for our navigation. So first off, it's gonna be home, and then services, products, contact, and lastly, about. Okay, so I write clicked on the index.html and I opened it up with the live server extension. So this is what we have so far. Uh, do remember the font awesome. Uh, script tag is needed so those icons will appear. So right below the title, I'm going to add that font awesome. Script And I'm also gonna go to the website just to show you guys where I got that script tag from. So we're gonna go to cdnjs.com and this is the all.min.js and we're gonna copy that and that's the one that I'm pasting into the script for the source.
Okay, here, so I need to uh, adjust the icons. So within the UL, I'm gonna create I'm actually gonna above the UL I'm gonna create the FA-bars and that's gonna be the navigation and then right below that label I'm gonna create a nav tag and I'm gonna put the UL and the LI elements within inside the nav once we get this cleaned up will transition over to the CSS. So right below the nav tag, we're gonna create a label and it's gonna be for check. And then it's gonna be class close. We're gonna change the above label to open. And then we're gonna have a I with a class of F A S F A dash times. So we have both of the navigation items. And as you can see, I need to add in the image into the folder. So we have the image there. I'm just inspecting it. Yep, the image. So I need to uh, transfer that over from the other folder. And I will leave the link to the starter files in the description down below. So I'm grabbing the image and I'm going to drag it over into that image folder that we have within the Visual Studio Code. All right, we have the image brought over. Cool. And then I'm adding the directory so image forward slash blue dot jpeg and it's quite large right now but we'll fix that in the css okay so starting off we are going to use the global selector and i'm going to copy and paste just for uh, the sake of the length of the video so we're gonna have box sizing, border box, margin zero, and padding zero. This is gonna give us a clean slate to start off with. Below that, we're gonna give the body a font family of that Google font, Montserrat. And uh, if you guys don't are, aren't familiar with how to integrate Google fonts, there's uh, plenty of tutorials and let me know if you want me to put a link to one of the tutorials that I've watched to uh, integrate that feature. Okay, so below the body, it's going to be dot wrapper class and then the nav. So we're just going to go look over in the HTML and there is the wrapper there and then we are selecting the nav within it. So there's the nav. So we have a height of 100 view and width 100% display flex. Remember the default display flex is going to be in a row. Then we're gonna justify the content, align item center, uh, position absolute, and we're going to give a top of zero, left zero. So it starts on the top left side, a background linear gradient of 45 degrees. And there's the pink and the orange color. We're also going to add a transition all and a 
clip path for that circle. So we have the HTML in which classes we're styling. So it's going to be the wrapper and open, font size to rem, position absolute, and we're going to give it a 10 pixel top left. Cursor pointer. We're also going to give it that cool uh, linear gradient with the 45 degrees. I'm going to adjust this so we can see it a little bit better. There is the clip path and that is going to be circle and we are going to have a padding of 12 pixels. Okay, so we're going to select the wrapper nav dot close class. That's going to be font size 2 rem, position absolute, top 10, left 10, color white, and the cursor pointer. So that's going to be the, the times, the X sign. And now we're going to style the wrapper nav UL, and we're going to give it a list style of none. So we don't have any of the underline or bullet points. All right, now it's the wrapper nav UL LIA. So those are the links, the home, the about, the contact, and services and products. So it's going to be text decoration none, uh, display block, text transform uppercase, font size 2 rem, padding 20, uh, text align center, so it's in the middle, and we're going to give it a white color. So now we're going to do nav ul lia after, uh, blank content, and we're going to display block, and it's going to be width 100%, height 2 pixels, transition 0.3 of a second, with the ease, and then background white. Now it's going to be the wrapper, nav u l i a hover after. So it's going to be a width 100%. Now we're going to style the wrapper uh, ID check and then checked with the nav, and it's going to be a click path circle 100%. So it gives us this really cool expanding effect. I was really excited to. Uh, discover this style because I think it looks really futuristic. It's um, how it transitions to 100% of the screen. Okay, so now we're going to style the banner. That's going to be position relative with a width of 100%, min height, 100 view height, display flex, justify content center, align item center. Now we're going to go to dot banner before that's going to be uh, blank content and position absolute I'm going to stretch this out here uh, bottom zero left zero width 100% height 75 and Z index one so this is going to give us a little bit of a tint on the bottom and it uh, will also help for readability of the H2 and the paragraph text. So now it's going to be the banner uh, and content. So position relative, max width 900 pixels, text align center, and IZ index. Uh, usually you'll put the, if you have, you'll put a larger Z index if you have any issues with the overlay. Um, now we're going to go on to the banner H2 content. It's going to be white, font size 5 EM, uh, text shadow. And now we're going to go to the paragraph. Uh, same idea with a little bit of letter spacing. Now we're going to style the button. Uh, once we get a little bit along here, it will. I'll add the CSS style so everything starts lining up. So we have the button. Before and after, we have blank content, position absolute, width 14, height 6, background red, transform, and we're going to skew the x 50 degrees with a transition of 0.4 seconds linear. Now we're going to have the button before and button after. So this is going to give us a little bit of a, a hover effect. 
and right around the corner, yeah, okay, fit BG is, uh, now we have our base with the resized image, and that's gonna be the fit BG is gonna be position absolute, and we're gonna start it off at the top so it aligns to the top left. Okay, that's better. So we're gonna style the rest of this button here. So dot BTN with the pseudo class hover, and then after, right 80%. And we have the before is the left 80%. So I'm gonna add some text into the button field. Okay, here we go. So call to action or learn more. And we have, when you hover over it in the desktop view, it's gonna slide those red sliders there. All right, we're almost done. So I'm gonna change that height to, we'll see what it looks like with eight pixels. I like seven. Yeah, looks great. Okay, so the last thing that we need is just a media query to, to see what it looks like on iPhone and um, other mobile devices. So you can see how the text is too big. Um, and we're gonna adjust this for mobile first. So we're gonna have at media only screen and max width 600 pixels and then we're gonna style the dot banner dot content and then we're gonna target the h2 and we're gonna give it a font size of 2 em And I'm going to refresh this here and it'll adjust. So now we're going to style the, the paragraph text because we could also um, use a little bit smaller text. And this is all up to your preference. Okay. Yeah, so you guys can style it uh, to your liking. I, I would like a little bit more padding on the left and right sides for that text, but I think it looks great right now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it.